The Prophet ﷺ had many companions and many of them are very famous and some of them not so famous. A young man by the name of Thabit ibn Qais who actually had a hearing disorder. He could only hear from one side of his ear. He used to insist that he sits right next to the Messenger ﷺ so his good ear is on the side of the Prophet ﷺ so he can hear him. As a matter of fact, Rasulullah ﷺ used to make extra accommodations for him to sit right next to him. And before I even tell you the subject of my khutbah, that's actually a very interesting indication of how Rasulullah would put in the first row people that have any kind of handicap. And usually we think of people that have a handicap, you put them in some other side space or some other place, some special accommodation. This person is sitting next to Rasulullah In any case, the story is actually somewhat interesting. He was late one time. He was late to come to the, the, the khutbah that the messenger was giving. So he kept pushing people to come to the front. And when he's coming to the front, he sees this one Sahabi who doesn't know, he's basically a no name companion, not famous guy. So he tells him, Move rudely. Now, this, the person who has the handicap is now being rude. He's saying, Move. And so the Sahabi refuses to move. And he says to him, Why don't you move? Who are you? Who do you think you are? Manant, Ibn Man. So he said, Call me Fulan, this is my name. It's interesting that when he mentioned his name, you know, you'd mention your name in Arabic, you mention who you're the son of. That's how you're identified. So he mentioned, I'm Fulan ibn Fulan, I'm the so and so's son. He goes, Oh, that one. Ibn Fulana? Oh, your mom is this woman, right? Now, these people, their parents are not Muslim, right? Because they just became Muslim, so their parents are non Muslims. And if they're non Muslims, they have history, they have different kinds of lives. So this, his, this guy's mother, this Sahabi's mother, she used to have a reputation in, the, in some shady circles. And the guy, the, the one who was moving him, remembered that, that she's married to that man. So he mentioned her father, his father. He said, oh, I know your father, but I also know your mother. And he said it like that. And was, this is the idea. The idea was to humiliate him, to embarrass him, to remind him of what his mother used to be like. And this is happening in the front row as the Rasul ﷺ is sitting there. So Rasul ﷺ stops the khutbah. And he points to that man. And he says, Mother right? Look around you, what do you see? He asks the Sahabi, who insulted the other Sahabi, what do you see? And he says, Ra'aytul aswad wal abyad wal ahmar. I see black, I see white, I see red. In other words, I see all these different people of different ethnicities, different colors, different races. I see all of them. And then Rasul says, Afdalukum indallahi atqakum. The best of you with Allah are the people that have the most taqwa. In other words, Rasul crushed this idea of being able to make fun of someone. I'm not saying anything, bro. I'm just saying, that's your mom, right? He was just going to do that much. But Rasul stopped him in his tracks, put it to an end. There's ways to insult people. Sometimes you can insult someone very directly, you can curse them out. Sometimes it's indirect. Sometimes you don't even have to use words to insult someone. And as a matter of fact, the most common way of demeaning someone, putting someone down, is not even to use words, to make a face. You can, make a certain, you can look at people a certain way, and they can know that you're not welcome. Or they think of you as inferior. You know? So now, our deen, of course, it tells us what to say and what not to say. But that's not enough. That's just not enough. Because sometimes people can actually use good words and still insult you. There's a way to call someone brother. And then we say, move brother. <laughs> brother. You could say the word brother in a kind way and you could say the same word brother in a demeaning, condescending way. Just because you're using the right word doesn't mean you have the right attitude. You guys know, those of you that are parents know that all too well. When your children say salam to you, there's different ways of saying salam. There's a way that shows respect and there's Maikam Salam. You, what did you say? Is it Walikum Salam? You did say it, but that's not how you say Salam. You, after Jumu'ah is done, you're trying to get to your shoes. You're just trying to good, push people out the way so you can get to your shoes because you know you have an emergency meeting. People's lives are depending on you, so your shoes are very important. So you're pushing people around, and this brother that you push kindly says to you, Salam Alaikum. Say Walikum Salam. And you, now you said something nice, may peace be upon you, but there's no peace on your face. There's no peace in the elbow you just threw at him. But you're saying something that you don't mean at all.
قد رسمنا بسمة وضاءة كم قد روينا قلب محزون هنا بعطائنا ضحك اليتيم وأشرقت قسمته